Dear reader, this project is not what I set out to do. My plan was to write about fandom and fan art and how they can be valuable tools in the counter-hegemonic struggle. But I was struggling. I began to realize how long I'd been struggling and how valiantly, how desperately, and how unflagging. I began to realize that I couldn't keep this up forever, that the siege was succeeding and the walls were being breached. I realized it was time to call for aid. I received it. But my allies cannot fight my battles for me. They cannot shore up the walls that have come down or rebuild the broken foundation. They can only give me the resources I need to rebuild myself. This desperate battle grew to consume my life, forestalling all other concerns. For this reason, the battle became my project. Lauren Berlant describes an object of desire as a cluster of promises that, through proximity to the object, grants those promises to the wielder. She states, The subjects who have X in their lives might not endure the loss of their object or scene of desire, even though its presence threatens their well-being. Because whatever the content of the attachment is, the continuity of its form provides something of the continuity of the subject's sense of what it means to keep on living on and to look forward to being in the world. And while Berlant sees cruel optimism as a broken promise, a form of Stockholm Syndrome, I think of it rather as the double-edged sword, the armor that bruises to prevent the cut. Certainly at times the weight of the armor defeats the soldier wearing it, and yet it's better still than riding into battle naked, afraid, and alone. Thinking with James C. Scott, I might call these cruel objects weapons of the weak, the tools that one uses to rebel in a world where, as Anne Spekovich makes clear in her 2012 book, depression is the only reasonable response to the omniscient incentivization of silence, suppression, division, and interpersonal violence. In thinking through object-oriented ontology with writers like Sarah Ahmed and Timothy Morton, I have learned to pay greater mind to the things in my life. These are my happy objects. These are the things I have loved that have loved me. These are the walls I built around myself when I was under siege. These are the things I armed myself with in the battle against oppression. These are the people who helped me before I could ask for help. Ruminate on the things that love you. Read my arsenal and invite yourself to examine, tear down, revisit, or rebuild your own. Love sincerely, Joan. P.S. Every image is an object. Every object is a story. Comfortable, I walk the door, toss and in the